It's never a good look for the United States when our embassy has to be evacuated by U.S. Special Forces, and that's what happened in Khartoum, Sudan. Now, what you need to understand, any logistics within Africa can be very difficult, and we've had issues in the past before with dealing with embassies, and I'm talking about Benghazi. And if you don't act fast and you're not decisive, things can happen to your embassy. That's why at the time of making this video, we have word that U.S. Special Forces evacuated the U.S. Marines who were guarding the embassy and embassy staff. We've just learned that all diplomats and their family members are on their way out of Sudan and the U.S. Embassy in Khartoum is now closed. This comes after a week of intense fighting between rival armies, hundreds of people. And this is a very tough situation because, again, from, a, from an American perspective and sitting in the United States, you're like, okay, yeah, things are going down in Africa. But what you have to realize is that even within Sudan, we have U.S. citizens. So we don't want this to turn into another Afghanistan evacuation where we have people left behind because then we start losing the trust of the people, the United States citizens, and the trust of the Sudanese government who are like, you can't even take care of your own people and now we have to take care of Americans. The U.S. Embassy successfully evacuated everyone tonight and closed its doors. There are still close to 16,000 American citizens living in the country. The U.S. issued a warning today asking them to shelter in place until further notice. I mean, what else are you going to do, right? You're just going to you, you got to sit there. The exact same thing happened in Afghanistan. Now, I'm not going to quite compare this too much to Afghanistan because we were under a timeline and U.S. citizens and anyone affiliated with the United States were actively being hunted. This is a little different. U.S. Africa Command is monitoring the situation and conducting prudent planning for various contingencies. In Khartoum, many people packed up whatever they could fit in a suitcase and prepared to leave by bus. So here's what the issue is for U.S. citizens within Sudan. Um, here's Khartoum, and in Khartoum we had the embassy. As we know, everything's been evacuated. And Sudan is a really big country, so U.S. citizens can be spread out throughout Sudan. The official process, if you needed help, you would go to the U.S. embassy. You could stay there if you wanted to be protected. If you needed any information, you go to the embassy. Now, the embassy members went from Khartoum, they went into Ethiopia, they flew out of Khartoum into Ethiopia, they refueled and went to Djibouti. Djibouti is the one U.S. military base where, like, our central hub is for the African command. So, luckily for the U.S. citizens, they are close enough to Djibouti where we can try to get a logistics train or some sort of direct route to Djibouti if U.S. citizens want to get out of Sudan. And that's what's currently going on right now with the DOD, with intelligence, and with the State Department. They are looking for direct access and roads to get to Djibouti through Ethiopia because Ethiopia is a strategic partner and ally to the United States. Because it doesn't look like the United States is going to be flying any more special operations into Sudan. This is all on the U.S. citizen now to get over to Djibouti and figure it out. Now, what's interesting is that the United States already sort of preemptive this whole thing. As you can see here from the Defense Department, the Defense Department had deployed troops and capabilities to Djibouti just in case there was an order to evacuate the embassy in Khartoum, which pretty much means we are most likely going to evacuate, knowing the U.S. military. The Joint Staff Director's Operations. Uh, the U.S. military evacuated those personnel in support of the State Department, closing operations at the embassy in Khartoum. Um... A contingent of U.S. forces lifted off from Djibouti and landed in Ethiopia. And the aircraft were three MH-47 Chinooks refueled in Ethiopia before flying approximately three hours to Khartoum. So this was a pretty long air mission. Again, these are not easy logistics, and I'm assuming that's why we had U.S. Special Forces sort of take command of this whole thing, probably help plan a lot of it, and evacuated everyone out of Khartoum. Because again, logistics and operations in Africa can get very dangerous. I mean, we have movies based off of these failed operations. So I'm actually not surprised. I'm a little proud of Biden for making a decisive action and saying we need to get out of Sudan and Khartoum. We don't want to leave any U.S. citizens behind. And again, one of the biggest black eyes and sores on the U.S. military and the U.S. government's decisive actions to help embassies um, would be Benghazi. And Benghazi has sort of been, um, we forgot about Benghazi um, because of the Afghanistan evacuation and the current events that are going on now. 
But the U.S. military and operations in Africa will never forget about Benghazi, where troops needed help. Uh, the ambassador was saying, we need help. Things are not looking good. And unfortunately, things got so bad where the help ended up getting there a little too late. So this was from two days ago. And as you can see, um, the State Department, the DOD, the U.S. military, they really did not want to go through with these U.S. military operations. Because again, when you pull from an embassy, you're leaving all your assets behind. And that's a pretty costly mission and a dangerous mission because essentially you have to destroy all of your equipment. You have to make sure the documents are all cleared um, because, again, you're leaving behind U.S. assets. And so, as you can see from this clip, again, two days ago, the U.S. military was hoping that peace would occur and everything would sort of cool down. Is on urging both sides to stop this violence, to abide by a ceasefire, to allow humanitarian aid to get to people that are uh, that are that need it. I mean, there's already shortages of food. There's concern over shortages of medicine and water. Uh, the situation is dire in Khartoum, uh, and we continue to urge both sides now to stop this violence. What is the timeline for making a final decision, and are sanctions on the table against these rival factions? I won't get ahead of any sanctions uh, decisions. I mean, we'll always look at a range of tools and capabilities that we have uh, to try to. Uh, to compel uh, both sides here to stop this violence. Um, yeah, they're talking about sanctions. Like at this point, when you're fighting a civil war, they don't care about sanctions. Now, one group of military assets that we need to give a little hype to are the U.S. Marines, because we tend to forget the U.S. Marines. It's probably one of the either most boring jobs or the best job ever to guard an embassy. And you just never know. It's the luck of the draw when your embassy might be the one that gets attacked or you're under threat. And it just so happened that the Marines in Sudan, they were dealing with that threat. And as you can see here, um, the Marines who protected and defended the embassy during the past week, our Marines who protect many of our embassies overseas do not often get the credit they deserve. Their courage under duress represents America at its best again in this instance. And I agree. So shout out to the U.S. Marines who have to protect these embassies. Again, these are not the most glorious jobs. And we tend to forget like we usually have military assets guarding embassies like the U.S. Marines. And so the one thing I don't like is that the entire headline is all about the U.S. Special Forces. The U.S. Special Forces came in and saved the Marines. When look, U.S. Special Forces, they did their job. They evacuated U.S. citizens and Marines. But again, let's remember U.S. Marines were there first and they were probably doing the best they could to ensure everyone was safe. Now, as the DOD verified, there are still American citizens in Sudan. In the coming days, we will continue to work with the State Department to help American citizens who may want to leave Sudan. One of those ways is to potentially make the overland routes out of Sudan potentially more viable, like we had talked about before. So DOD is at present considering actions that may include use of intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance capabilities to be able to observe routes and detect threats. Now, again, the biggest issue here is that the U.S. military is not going to send assets out of Djibouti to go save U.S. citizens out of Sudan in case it got super dire and U.S. citizens were getting targeted. That is not what's going on in Sudan. If anything, the two factions are trying to fight themselves. It just so happens, per usual, under these uh, civil war threats, citizens, not only U.S. citizens, are the the damage and result of bad efforts from these factions. So yeah, we have U.S. citizens still in Sudan. We don't know whether or not those citizens are like really, really trying to get out of Sudan. Um, but one thing is for sure, they don't have American assets in Khartoum anymore, and they will have to get out of Sudan and go into Djibouti. So shout out to um, everybody that made this happen, to the U.S. Special Forces Marines. It looks like this was a successful operation. Um, I'm very happy it didn't turn into another Black Hawk Down situation or something bad in Africa, because whenever you hear of things like like this in U.S. operations in Africa, it's never good. It's usually bad. So it's finally good to see something like this happen. Everything came together. And President Biden actually made a good call here. He made a decisive call. Glad it all went down. Let me know what you guys think down below. This is all still developing and rather fresh and new. Um, my name is T-Spy, and we'll see you guys later.